it's the next level. Hope is a powerful thing. Melanie used it to unite the people. First with a lie, but then with the promise of a life off of Snowpiercer. Andre Layton used hope to inspire his people to fight for their freedom. But look where that's got him. And Mr. Wilford is a different story. He's turned hope into fear. He's turned the train against itself and then offered security. The funny thing is, since he took control, everything appears to be running smoothly. Welcome back to the show, panelers. I'm Steve. And I'm Daphne. And this is a spoilerful podcast of the Snowpiercer Season 2, two-hour season finale. Wow, that's the word season a lot of times in one sentence. It really is. But you know <laughs> what? I feel like since it was a double episode, season Deserved. and season twice in a sentence is okay. So we've got a couple of synopses. Synopsises? Anyway. I call it synopses. Okay. Synopses. Um, for these two episodes, for episode nine called The Show Must Go On, uh, IMDb told us those who are close with Layton grow anxious to learn their fates. Josie tests her newfound ability. And then the final episode, episode 10, called Into the White, was as the train approaches Melanie's retrieval point, Layton leads a furious attempt to try and pick her up, but not without some sacrifices. Oh, oh goodness. Yeah. So what were your first impressions, Daphne, of these of these two episodes together this season finale? Well, I think I mentioned to you before we started recording tonight that I feel like a lot of TV shows are moving in this direction where the penultimate episode is more intense and impactful than the mm -hmm. actual season finale. And I'm wondering if when they bundled these episodes together, they weren't thinking about that or were thinking about that because... Episode 9, to me, was the most intense. Mm -hmm. And episode 10 was kind of... Um, it wasn't a letdown. It was just kind of a continuation, but it wasn't quite as intense as episode 9. Both of them gave me all the feels. Like, mm -hmm. I was scared. I was happy. There was sadness, confusion. I'd like to be optimistic for the future of our people, but I'm really <laughs> nervous about what could happen because we learned some things about Wilford mm -hmm. that were never mentioned before, but now that we know them, it makes him even worse than I anticipated. Yes, yes, absolutely. And that's, for me, I knew that I was going to need multiple watches of this one. And in fact, I, I watched these episodes three times. So for me, they're really kind of a jumble in my head um, as far as, as what happened in, in which episode and what the order of things kind of is. But I, I like the beginning of Nine because we get that reminder that that oppressive regime regimes, that yeah, oppressive regimes sometimes seem good. At the beginning, you know, because we're we're hearing Ruth's monologue and she's talking about how everything's moving along. The supply lines are open. We, we're seeing people working. We're seeing people, you know, doing stuff. Uh, but then we get to the dark underbelly of it, of Jack Boots in the doctor's office, collecting up patient files and finding out that, you know, and I'll get more into that into my when we get yeah. into discussion points. But it was that was what really ran through my mind when. Ruth was making this comparison between hope and fear and about how Layton used hope and how uh, uh, Wilford uses fear. So well, really... I'd be scared. Wouldn't mm -hmm. you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. frightening. <laughs> Especially if I'm not first class. Yeah. You know, um, anybody who's not first class should be scared at this point. Yeah. And, and we'll uh, get into that in a bit. Like what, 
the dynamic of a Wilford regime, presidency, dictatorship, mm -hmm. tyrant style yeah. world and, really is. And we started to see that because we started to see him kind of unraveling there when he figured out, uh, well, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Let's, yeah, we I get, feel like we let's... have to get into it because there's so much. We could talk about it, and then we'd get to the end and realize, oh, we've already talked about everything. Yes. So yes. we might as well just jump right in. Let's jump right in, and as I do every week, you may go first. All right. Well, my number five is <laughs> Willie's World and Wilford's <laughs> Productions, okay? His carnival. Yeah. It was like this twisted nightmare, and he was a psychotic ringmaster. And then you had the Alice in Wonderland tea party evening. Yes, I didn't even put that together until you put it in the notes of the Alice in Wonderland. I went more toward like a Willy Wonka kind of thing with where he's passing out these tickets. And yes. we have Lila Jr. apparently offer meds or something because she was wild. Um, oh, but, classic Lila Jr. tonight, I feel like. And it's it's one of those things that, that, again, I bring up the oppressive regime because one of the things that that those regimes do also, like if you think of Rome they 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 set up the gladiators and they set up those um what do they call them the coliseum fights to try to distract the people from what was going on and wilford's kind of doing the same thing here with this carnival where he's, yeah. he's trying to distract everybody and you know oh look over here don't look what i'm doing over here because i don't want you to know that i'm gonna set up this census and i'm gonna yeah so yeah i don't want you to know that i'm taking your medical records to determine your age and health Mm -hmm. an occupation and whether or not you have a ticket to determine yeah. whether or not I'm going to throw you off the train. Yeah. <sighs> oh, just when you think he can't get any worse, he is worse. Yeah. yeah. And that's kind of my number five is kind of Wilford as well is just the, we kind of see an unraveling of him in parts of these, these episodes. We see him kind of lose it when, when Josie will, almost refuses and he's like, throw her out of the train and lock the door, you know? And, oh, and... I know. It was, oh, I and... thought I understood who he was, but mm -hmm. no, I don't have a clue. Yeah. He's absolutely. just worse than I ever imagined. Yeah. And it, he, he finally, he admits to Till that he put Roche and his whole family in the drawers. And that apparently there's other people that have already been put into the drawers you know, to keep them kind of out of the way until things are more orderly or whatever he thinks. Um, he even admits to her, and I think I've got this later in my notes as well, but he even admits to her of, of him setting up the breachman to be killed. Yeah. And, and he just let up tells her, yeah, they were, they were working on my orders, but here's all the ones that did it. And you have the choice about uh, executing them or not. And I'll talk some more about that later as well. But uh uh, and then you already brought up, we, we haven't really brought up the culling that Alex mentioned, but we did. Oh, but we kind of referred to it because that conversation mm -hmm. took part, it took place at the crazy tea party dinner. Yes. Yes. And she admitted, oh, you're going to do what you did before. Mm -hmm. And that revealed a lot of information to those that were sitting around the table, especially yeah. Ruth, who I feel really tried to keep things together but i think that was the final straw for her because she's been so focused on protecting everyone on the train mm -hmm. she doesn't look at them i mean she to me i think she thinks there's right and wrong and she tries to do the best that she can um we'll get into it more later but ruth for me has grown the most out of any character on this show. absolutely Oh, absolutely. She saw how Snow under Layton, she saw how Snowpiercer could be ran where everybody's together, you know, where you're all united. And under Wilford, he doesn't want that. He wants everybody divided. He so. wants everyone scared of mm -hmm. him. And I don't think that you can trust that if you're his ally today, you'll be his ally tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I mean, look how he went back and forth on Alex in these two episodes. Oh, that was a mind trip. You know, throwing well, he... her into the obliet, obliet, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. The way he treated her mm -hmm. in this episode. His expectation of her. 
But I think she was just a pawn in his game. Ultimately, yeah. And even he says that. He tries to tell her that. Oh, you know, you were just a pawn. You were just a piece that I moved a around. A lover. Yeah. In order a to lover. Get, <laughs> a lever. That's what it was. In order to get to your mom. Get your mom off the train. So. Yep. Sad. Mm. Because Melanie wanted to be a better person and better mother. And she wanted to do something to raise her standards with Alex. Where I think if she'd stayed on the train, she would have been able to do that. But I think we saw Melanie even though we really only saw her like half the season, mm -hmm. I feel like we saw Melanie grow as well. We saw oh, what she had to do to keep the train under, you know, control. Mm -hmm. However, when you throw Alex in the mix and she realizes that something she thought was long gone is actually there, something she loves and cares about, I don't think she wanted Alex to be something to be hung over her head like mm -hmm. a carrot, like Wilford would do. And I yeah. think she was doing what was best for everyone on the train by going to get the data they needed, which we're learning the world's warming up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, so what is your next one? <laughs> oh, my next one is we're... Josie, 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 oh, Josie. Josie. Oh, my goodness. I wasn't sure how I felt at the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. about her being still alive. However, I was real excited that she was out there and breaking into the aquarium. Although, oh. I have to admit, the aquarium, watching everything freeze, the fish, the turtle, mm -hmm. ugh, that was rough for me. I love yeah. animals, so that was rough. But I love that Josie, she figured out what she had to do. She had to wait for her moment. Mm -hmm. And this was a moment that she... You know, she had no choice. She was heading up train on Wilford's orders. However, listening to what Ben had to say, she mm -hmm. was able to kind of save the day. Absolutely. Yeah, she was. And I, I didn't figure this out really until the third, till this third watch that I just did about an hour or so ago, is she was Ben's, Ben had a plan B. He was yes. the only person who had a plan B. Nobody else had a plan B. If, and that's what I figured out in this third watch that when he called Josie, because he knew what she was going to do, because Sykes had said, well, she's going to she's going to break in to this car, to the engine car. So she's going to have some sort of tool that's going to allow her to break in mm -hmm. to a car. And so I love that he called her back because he realized, OK, every step of the way so far, Wilford has, has found a, a way to sabotage us and get mm -hmm. like he did in episode nine when they wanted to pick up Melanie. And so I think this was, this was Ben's, like I keep saying, plan B that he had Josie and he told her what to do uh, to get that car uncoupled. And uh, I, when that realization hit me, I was like, wow, that put Ben in a whole nother level of just not, of just thinking ahead because I, I think he realized that Wilford was going to find a way to mess the, the plan up. As and, he always does. <laughs> yes. But I also think it was the first time that Ben and the group were a step ahead of Wilford because mm -hmm. they'd always been one or two steps behind. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this was the first opportunity. It was kind of like Leighton and Ruth, everyone smartened up mm -hmm. and realized you're not going to beat him by being noble and, you know, like that. It's not going to happen. But you don't also don't have to go down and dig into the deep trenches of evilness mm -hmm. that he had. You just right. had to be smarter. Yeah, yeah, and and I think, and I had some of this in my number one, so I'll, I'll see if I can make sure I don't want to say too much right now. But I think there there may have been conversations and explanations and planning that we didn't see that we didn't need to see. But at first, the first couple of watches, I was kind of like, man, these people are really coordinated for never actually having put a plan together. I know. You know, and then I realized, wait, there must have been some things that happened off screen, some discussions that happened off screen because we had been at, uh, we had been talking to Boki and they were in communication when Boki was by the J links. And so I think it was just things they didn't show us. They didn't need to show us, but it was just it was it was cool to see them, like you said, all working together and finally being that one step ahead to where yeah it was nice to finally see that that to me is what episode 10 was about it's yeah. like they finally 
got smacked upside the head. Okay, we can't beat him that way. The only way we can is to actually use our brains mm -hmm. and our brawn because Boki, you know, Boki did what he had to do. Mm -hmm. Boki, again, the lone survivor, the breachman that, you know, Wilfred thought he killed them all and it comes mm -hmm. back to bite him. Yeah, yeah. Because who's Boki got the survived. Yeah, who's got the wrench? Who's down there with the lug wrench? He's yes. he asked, you know. Uh, so yeah, I love that. I love that, and I, you know that's all setting up for season three as well because we don't know. And I've got this is later on in my notes as well, but I'll bring it up now. We don't know Boki's fate. We no. don't know. We don't. We think Javi so might nervous, be dead, but so Javi nervous. Javi might even still be alive. Ruth is on that train. Zara is on that train. So we. There's a, a really good, all this stuff that's setting up for season three uh, that I'm excited and we're probably not going to see it for like a year. I know. <laughs> and you know what? That segues really smoothly into my number three, which was basically about unconditional sacrifice, mm -hmm. the things that people did in this episode and the fate of our Snowpiercer family. Mm-hmm. Because that's what, you know, I've referred yeah. to them as like our family, our people, all season. I feel like we have seen them go through so many ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And the sacrifices, like Melanie walking out into the white after realizing that the most important thing was not her, but the data. Oof. That was rough, rough watching that and watching Alex read that. The, the yeah. note that, that Melanie left and the realization that she's gone. Um, yeah. At the very least, she's gone. She's not on, she's not around. Yeah. We don't not... know for sure, but for now, there is no Melanie. I, I'm keeping that little glimmer of hope that she, someone found her. Because I am as well. We don't know. It was warm. It was, things were warming up. So. Mm hmm Maybe. She might have found a patch. She might have found somewhere, you know, like that place where the rats were living that yeah. had that, that she might be able to find a place. And so I, I think that's that's great. Um, we skipped over my number four. <gasps> we did. Well, let's <laughs> go back to it. <laughs> and it's it's a real quick, it's it's kind of a real quick one, but it's just Lila and Oz. And this is as as oh, demented, as demented as it is, it's uh it's really she's calling him or her boyfriend, you know, and, oh, he's head of uh, janitorial. And, uh, but we finally get somebody, the two things that I really loved about this quick little scene we get between Wilford, Oz, and Lila is we finally get somebody asking about Terrence. Wilford asks, <laughs> by the way, where is my head of janitorial? You have been waiting for someone to ask that question for the last three or four episodes. And I love, <laughs> I love Till's response. Uh, that was a crazy time. There was a lot of things going on right then. I was like, it was like two weeks ago. Yes, it was. And no one cared that he got his mouth full of that caulking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then the reminder of, of Lila's crimes. Uh, yeah, you know, and and Wilford just kind of playing it off as well. Oh, okay. Well, if you're innocent, then I guess you're innocent, and it's fine. But she <laughs> so, isn't, and he knows not. it now, so he can he can probably count on her. But I feel like, honestly, Ruth and the others need to look at LJ and re and figure out how to utilize her to their advantage, mm -hmm. because I still think she could be useful for them. It'll be interesting to see how how she plays it in season three because it seemed yeah. like she was she was kind of sliding over to Wilford's side. Mm -hmm. You know, when she calls out Alex on the lie, she says, "I saw your mom do the same thing, fake a call to the engine." And so, uh, yeah, so it, it's going to be interesting. Season three is uh, uh, that actress is pretty talented. She is. She, she is. does such a great job. And who knew that Oz. Who knew that he was a musician, not only a musician, but his his voice was incredible. That song mm -hmm. brought tears to my eyes because yeah. it was such a powerful song that really represented things that were ha happening on their life in their lives on the show. Yeah. Is that a real song or was that written for the show? I didn't I it. don't know. I did not get to look it up, but I did write down some of the lyrics so I could go look it up. <laughs> okay. And I just haven't had a chance yet. Okay. Uh well let's go back to go back to your your talking about sacrifices. I don't think we wrapped up well, your whole you know, it 
it's not just sacrifices. It's more of like the unknown fates. You know, it's sacrifices, but also unknown fates. It's kind of, you know, this gray area of we don't know what's happened to Melanie. Javi's fate is unknown, although I feel like he sealed his fate when he sent the lipstick message mm -hmm. down to, what was it? The compost pit, the compost, which gross, yeah. Yeah. gross, gross, gross. Quick thinking on Javi's part and yes. quick thinking on, on Ruth to see it. And, mm -hmm. and realize what it was. I mean, uh, there's a lot of things that could have happened there where they might not have gotten that message, you know. And uh, and so, like I said, quick thinking on him on, on how to, to send the message, to seal it up in that lipstick thing. Uh, yeah. Lipstick case or however. I don't know. I don't, yeah, he chopped I don't the lipstick it. out and stuck it in there, wrote it very quickly, and yeah. flushed the toilet and hoped for the best. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad that they were able to get the message. I'm hopeful that Javi's still alive, although I think he's probably pretty chewed up as yeah. imagine, by the dog. Yeah, but, you know, Wilford, we did hear Wilford say stop to the dog before yeah. he went up and, and accelerated the train. So it, there's, and we saw the jackboots dragging Javi out. Uh, I was trying on my third watch, I was trying to see if he was somewhere in the Headwoods little infirmary car but i didn't i couldn't see where yeah. he was in there or not so where's icy bob recuperating where's icy bob yeah i guess he's still <laughs> recuperating as well so. and where are the tailies like what about we didn't see pike this episode mm -mm. we the only tailie that i think we saw is we saw lights mm -hmm. and, and we saw we winnie, saw winnie. Mm -hmm. and i think that's all that we really got to see yeah i so, you know, that, strong that boy yeah yeah that carnival took up a lot of took a lot of people away from where we would have seen them. Yeah, and and so it'll be that's another thing that's gonna be interesting to see uh, is how far you know how far is how far of a time jump or if we're gonna have a time jump with with season three or if it's gonna pick up right where it left off. You know, are they gonna show us the two different trains? Are they gonna show us what's happening on you know the other hundred one thousand twenty four cars? Uh, yeah. Snowpiercer and then the pirate train. <laughs> <laughs> I love the pirate train. Um, yeah, the pirate train. Uh, so, okay, so that leads us to my number three. Mm -hmm. Or okay, um, and it's just three. it's Alex's voiceover on in episode ten. I just I it was really cool to get to hear her perspective on this whole thing, really, because yeah. she says I was ten years old. When the, when the train started and Wilford said he was my only family and he was going to take care of me. And what does she call him? Daddy Dubs. But Daddy then, Dubs, yeah. But then he started, even before Melanie got into the picture, she felt isolated. She felt alone. She said she was her own island. Yeah, you know? then no one came ashore. Yeah. And then she met Melanie and she said that's when Dubs got weird. And so it, it was really, really interesting that, that everything turned around with, with that. Um, you know, Wilford, we've talked about the power he had over Alex. I think he fully lost his power over Alex in this, in these episodes. Absolutely. Um, I think so too. And Alex said she saw women with power keeping the world alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I loved it. that. I love that she says, she says she saw how Leighton was able to do it. And she, like you said, she saw women in power and she saw things that she saw that hope. And I've got one of her quotes is down below that I'm a part of that monologue that I loved. Um, but, you know, and then later we see how he reacts to her attempt to, and we talked about it a little bit earlier, you know, he, she wants to go get Melanie and he's like, no, and he gets mad at her. And then he starts to, again, he comes down to that point where he calls her a lever, like yeah. you said. And it just, I, I, in that moment when she cut him, with the razor. Oh, yes. Um, and I think that confirms for us. We talked about this earlier in the season. That confirms for us that that's what she was going to do. He was going to have her cut Leighton's throat. Yes. With a, with a razor blade. So, yeah. 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 I think Alex... I, I think Wilfred before had this power over Alex where his mm -hmm. words would cut like daggers into her. I'm not sure that he can still wield that power over her. I think she has moved on. Mm -hmm. And I love that just before um, she slices him, he, she says to him, 
you would never be the leader. Mm -hmm. She is. Yeah. When he hits her and then she slices him. And I'm just like, I wish it had gone deeper. (laughs) We needed it to go deeper. (laughs) Uh, So that uh, segues into your number two. Which is Alex. Okay. What a wealth of information. She knows almost all of Wilford's dirty little secrets. Mm Mm-hmm. And I think that's incredible. I mean, sharing the information about the calling of passengers Mm -hmm. that happened on Big Alice, that information makes me very nervous that he's going to, you know, dump the tailies by just Mm -hmm. cutting the car off. Yeah. That makes me very nervous. Um, The the decoupling using the aquarium car. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and using the razor from that night out episode, like, yep. like you said, she was supposed to kill Leighton and she didn't. She and... knew the secret entrance into his bedroom, mm-hmm. the Big Alice's engine that enables Andre and, and Ruth to, uh, to secure Big Alice's engine room for hobby. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she's really, I love that when she's in the cell and they're, they're going to break her out. She's like, no, no, I have my own way out. And she figures yeah. out that she's she's going to lie about uh, about agreeing to to uh, go up train with with Wilford, but he still doesn't believe it when it comes down to it. No, of course not. Of course not. I think he's he's a very smart man, but he's such an egomaniac that mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Every time I think I've figured him out, he does something even worse. Yeah. So I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's uh, um. So that yeah. brings us to my number two. Yes. Okay. So my number two is the breakout, the breakout scene with Andre and Ruth. And I just loved how he, he talks about how we're going to have to be not just ruthless, but we're going to have to push it to the edge. Cause he said, that's what, what Wilford would do is he push it people right to the edge. We're going to have to do things. And he basically murders that jailer who, yeah, by the way, that food slot was way too big. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm like, they have this ginormous food slot to slide the tray in and out. That's problematic by the beginning. He's wearing the keys when he comes to the door to give them the tray of food. Big mistake right there, buddy. <laughs> you know? Um, Not a very smart jailer. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just and we talked a little bit about it when that, that moment when they see Alex and Alex sees them and she has this just look of relief and joy that she sees that they're out and they tell her that Melanie is alive. They have confirmation for sure that Melanie is alive and that's why they're gonna take the engine back. Uh, I just it was just all of it was really great. But then they see the bathtub after uh. they secured the car. And the first thought I had was, oh, if they knew what had gone on in that bathtub. Oh my goodness, Kevin. <laughs> uh-huh. Poor Kevin. And probably Josie as well. Oh, um, yeah, that bathtub. Oh my gosh. But you know, as they probably still would have taken baths, even if they knew. Because yeah. I don't know how long they've been in that compost <laughs> car. Yeah. But everybody who encounters them is like, whoa. Whoa, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the smell will give it away before they actually arrive to their mm-hmm. destination. It's pretty gross. Yeah. Watching them, though, work together, I loved that. Yes, yes. I loved very... watching them work it out while they were in the compost pile, just talking about what they needed to do and waiting for the right moment. And that segues, honestly, into my number one, which is mm-hmm. Ruth, um, her choices, and how she really stepped up in this episode. Mm-hmm. I mean, she was not afraid to use that shovel. Yeah. Which was awesome. I think she has grown the most in this season, especially if you look at where she started to where she is now, she's been the constant that even though Melanie was removed from leadership of the train, Mm -hmm. she still was working to help the new regime. Like she was really, she was the one that put all the passengers first. Right. Even the tailies after, after the the Layton's revolution, she even put the tailies the tailies became part of her, the passengers, as far as she yes. was concerned. And so as soon as they became part of the passengers, there was a flip switched, a flip switched, a switch flipped. Switch flipped. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. A switch flipped in her, in her brain, as far as how she regarded the tailies. Yeah. And it was really hard for her. I mean, she was in a competition she didn't know she was in. Mm-hmm. 
And then Wilfred says to her, Okay, you're the head of hospitality. Now go tell everyone Melanie's dead and she couldn't do it. Yeah, I love that. She I love couldn't that do it. I, I love that she stood up to him. Yeah, I love that. And I was just listening earlier today to an interview with a basketball coach. He was talking about the difference between fear and hope basically. And coaches who try to coach with fear, they only get loyalty to a certain point. Yes. And, but those that use affirmation and uh, they, they will get the the true loyalty and that's what Leighton had done. And so that's why Leighton has that true loyalty from Ruth. So I really, really like that. Yeah. I think he's, he really, I mean, I think Melanie told him when she left to, you know, really listen and get to know Leighton. Mm-hmm. because he was a good man. Yeah. And I think Ruth did that in spades, really. I mean, yeah. she really bonded with him as far as understanding his leadership. I think the day that they were going to um, cut Pike's arm off and Leighton said, no, take mine instead. Mm-hmm. I think that built a lot of respect in Ruth's eyes because he was willing to do whatever it took to save the people because that was what was most important to him Mm -hmm. and i'm yeah i'm so i'm sad the season is over but i'm Mm -hmm. really hopeful that some of our people will will survive yeah yeah um yeah we'll probably talk some more about it when we get into our notes section yeah uh my number one we've already talked about a lot of my number one but let me scan it here and see um we didn't talk a lot we talked a little bit about the plan at the end of of 10 of how they were going to um secure those 10 cars so they could go after melanie and I love that Ben has this fight with Sykes where he, he I think he totally underestimated how tough she was going to be. Yes. How formidable. He did, he, he did <laughs> not think she was going to be like that. And and she beat the snot out of him. Yes, she did. As you could see on his face with the blood everywhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I did love that little, when she throws him into the keyboard, he's able to kind of do this, the, the, the switch track thing on the keyboard. Um, and so that was really cool. I loved uh, Till punching Audrey, uh, making her the oh. hostage. And we're going to talk about Audrey when we get to notes. Uh, oh my goodness, Audrey. Audrey, Audrey, Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. Let's see. Uh, we talked about the Javi may have, may, yeah, I don't know. Javi might, uh, yeah, I don't know. We don't know. We don't know if Voki survived. We don't know Melanie. We don't know. We don't uh, know what's going to happen to them, what Wilfred will do to them. Right. Like, Uh, I feel like some of them are going to have to hide and there's no place to hide. It makes me nervous. Yeah. It's, it's going to be interesting to see. And like, like we we already talked about that with the, having the two separate trains is going to be an interesting, how, if they're going to bring those back together or how, if there's a way, if there's mechanisms within the train to bring those, bring them back together at some point, I would assume if you have a way to manually decouple that car, you have a way to, put them back together again uh, yeah well we saw how big aqua- alice yeah the aquarium yeah. connected them so i'm not i don't know yeah i it's gonna be gonna interesting work. to see um what happens with that so absolutely uh, okay so notes um i've got a quick one uh i liked javi when he was comparing alex to her mom at the beginning that of was the first so- episode so endearing, uh, yeah. so endearing. Love Javi. Uh, when she she puts her hand on the train, he goes, "Your mom would do that," you know. Um, we had a little bit of foreshadowing. You already talked about um, Ruth rejecting Wilford's offer, but we had a little bit of foreshadowing of that when Kevin tried to adjust some of the plates, and she stopped him, and she's like, "You had your carnival. This is mine." Yeah, this is you know. Yes, I loved that too. And I one thing that I did respect Wilford on. The uh, probably the only thing is he slapped Kevin when he mm-hmm. was going to slap Zara. Yes, yes, and Kevin didn't understand, and he had to until had to tell him, you know, pregnancy comes with privilege or pri- yeah, privilege Preg- comes with pregnancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and you, we can't let her. She's he, what did he call it? The the noble jelly, the the late the, the noble <laughs> latent jelly or something like that that yeah. she's got. 
Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah. And I wonder, I I wonder the second time I watched whether Wilford was knew that Ruth was going to reject that offer and that he was going to give it to Kevin all along. Um, probably because he would think ahead. There's mm-hmm. still this piece of me, and I know we've said we're going to talk about Audrey. There's still this piece of me that thinks that the whole thing with Kevin and Audrey is going to come on, come to play next season somehow. Because she's the one that has control mm-hmm. of Kevin. It's not Wilfred. Really. I mean, in all well, honesty. Yeah, I, but I, I don't yeah. know. Well, but it, it goes back to that that fear and and encouragement thing mm-hmm. that that Wilford has has Kevin's fear, and that's only going to keep him loyal to a point. But you're yeah. right, Audrey has the encouragement that she gave to Kevin, so he's going to be. So there might come a moment when it. For me, we can talk about Miss Audrey right now. Um, what bothered me, or us being wrong about Miss Audrey, is she talked about surviving is what she said. She, she told Zara we're survivors. I'm doing what I have to do to survive. And Zara was like, no, that can't, that can't be the way we live. And so I, I I could see Zara being able to maybe turn her around. I hope so. Because I think that Audrey, Audrey knew when she went to see Wilford Mm -hmm. that she was going to a very dark place again. She knew that place and she knew how hard it was, but I, f- I still feel like there's some part of her that's going to be venge, you know, want vengeance on him for past. Um, mm. And it's going to depend on how she gets treated as the hostage. I yeah. forgot she's, she's in the, she's in the pirate train. Yeah. Uh, so we'll it'll be interesting to see how they're treating her uh, next season. So. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, Wilfred's going to have to be very careful what he does. And we're going to learn how much he loves Audrey. Mm -hmm. Based on his actions. Well, yeah, and it looked like to me that she was just another throwaway piece. That Yeah. Like, I I was, I almost thought, really, that Leighton was going to slit her throat with that axe. Me too. Like, I really thought he was just going to do it right there. Where What did Wilford say in front of, in front of everyone in the God fish? God in the fish. <laughs> God in the fish. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, you know, it makes me think about Leighton in the last season finale and that impossible choice that he had mm-hmm. to let that train car go. The one with all of his friends on it. Right. And I feel like, again, he's been given... These impossible choices. Yeah. And I feel like he would have done it if he had to. Mm -hmm. I don't think he wanted to, but I think he was backed into a corner and the claws were coming out and he didn't have a choice. Yeah. So we'll see um, where this all lands us in the next, in the next season. Um, Yeah. A year from now, probably maybe next, honestly, probably next January. Yeah, I could see it. I could see that. So it, um, it's really not a full year, Steve. I think we can make it. Okay. I think we can. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, did you have any other notes? I've got a couple more notes that we haven't talked about. Um, Javi played this music when he was getting really scared. He just played mm-hmm. this music. He had his little hula dancer. And he was going into a mental place. And I was so happy to see that little bit of him that wasn't so serious minded. Mm-hmm. So I, I really liked that. And then there was a point when Alex was there and I thought Alex would say something to keep the dog from attacking him. Mm-hmm. And she didn't, I was hoping she would, but I yeah. think there's just too many. I mean, it's a chessboard and they're trying making the right decision at the right time. Mm-hmm. To show all your cards, it. Ugh. Well, and she was further. I think she was further back. Yeah. Um, because he had already put her out of, out, out of the room, and so yeah. she might not have been able to assert control. Yeah, over the that's dog, true. Uh, that's true. That I was hoping she was going to. Now yeah. I'm starting. Honestly, now I, what I'm really hoping for <laughs> is for Alex. To go all Game of Thrones on uh, <laughs> at the end with the dog and Wilford. Mm-hmm. 
that you yeah. know where I'm going. I'm yes, down with yes. that. Yeah, we, we can see that. See how that how that plays out. So, um, we didn't talk about the puppet show oh. at all. The just disturbing puppet show and Lila just showing her off her meds psychosis of just enjoying this this and you know it, it's another one of those signs where Wilford just hold on a second. <laughs> Sorry, um, where where Wilford had to, you know, Wilford had to write that thing out and script that thing out in such a way to manipulate Alex, and he should have known it would upset her. Yes, and and so it kind of surprised me that it went as far as it did. Not just showing Melanie dying, but like treating Alex like a baby and putting the pacifier in the puppet's mouth, you know, and that that chant of the engine will provide the engine will provide we haven't heard that for a while so exactly uh, it's creepy yeah it's all yeah. creepy it's some weird twisted fantasy honestly and yeah. i think honest i think at this point wilford really underestimates alex mm -hmm. because i still think she's going to play a big part in his demise because i have to be hopeful i have to have hope in this case and I have to, you know, I'm optimistic that I don't think he's the type of person that you can just put in a cell. Mm, I right. think he has no. to go. Like, yeah, he's, he's going to have to go. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I can't see any form of this show ending, whether it ends with the third season or wh whether they go further on. Yeah. I can't see it ending with his, with, with his character living. You Me know, either. I just... I can't see that whether it's Josie getting revenge or Alex or there's too many people that want to kill him. Yeah. I mean, yeah. really? Um, and yeah, I, ugh. and I'm still yeah. holding out hope that, that Melanie is alive. Me so. too. Me too. Um, uh, we got to be optimistic, Steve. We got to yes. think, we got to think positively <laughs> to get, you know, through these few months. Absolutely. Uh, so my only other note that I had was there was a little, we'll think there was a little, Chinese character or some kind of tattoo on the back of Allison Wright's Yeah, I don't she, know what I, that is. I tried to research it. I could not find anything. So uh, if somebody finds out, I don't know if that was a character thing or if that's uh, the actress has that tattoo. I'm not sure. But yeah, uh, but I noticed it. So the only other thing I have is the sample question is that they were going to pass out or mm -hmm. separated by age children adolescents and 18 thir to 39 and then he was considering anyone over the age of 39 elderly wow yeah i didn't pick up on that so that's yeah, a good... that frightened me a little bit i'm thinking mm -hmm. oh my gosh reminded me of deep impact mm -hmm. when they said i think it was anyone over 50 or 55 would not be eligible to go into the yeah into the bunker arc or the bunker yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's, oh, what a twisted world with Wilford. So we've got a few quotes here, or is that all of your notes? Do you have any more? Those are all my notes, I and I have a couple quotes from each episode. Yes, I've got a couple. I've got one from nine, and then I've got a couple from uh, from ten. So yeah. Um, go ahead, do yours first. All right. So when Till is talking to Wilford about crime versus order, Wilfred says there's no crime on his train, only order. And mm -hmm. Till just looks at him so seriously and says, I don't think you're that naive. And Wilfred says, I don't think you're that innocent. So I'm like, okay, well, she's kind of pushing back on him. And I liked that a lot. Mm -hmm. And then later on, she said to him, with respect, you can go ahead and lock up Leighton, but you'll find a bit of his fight in all of us now. I yeah. loved that one when I go ahead. Go ahead. I love that one as well. <laughs> I did too. I just thought it was great. I loved it. Till had some great quotes. I I love because whenever someone starts something with with all due respect, you know somebody's about to get disrespected. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so. they are. <laughs> and then there's this little conversation a little bit later um, with Leighton and Wilford. I think it was while Wilford was in the. Um, uh, in the sewage area. Oh, when he was talking to him through the door. Yeah. yeah. And okay. so Wilfred says, I suppose there must be something uniquely wrong with me. 
and Leighton looks at him and says, you're not unique, Wilfred. You're an old white dictator with a train set. Yes. Fragile, yes. powerful men like you froze the world in the first place. And I was just like cheering in my living room when I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> so the one I had, the one I had from nine was from that dinner party where, <laughs> when uh, Wilford comes in and, and uh, Till says something, says if Wilford threatens her baby, I'm going to kill him with my butter knife. Oh, I loved that. Too. And I, I really think, I think she could do it. I think, <laughs> yeah, you know, she could. Till and I just, is, Till's on it this season. She's been hardcore, and I have loved it. I just finished watching Camp Cretaceous, and you know, there's a butter knife in season two that is pretty prominent. So oh, good. if you guys haven't watched that, watch season two yet, but <laughs> yeah, I have not, but uh, we're going to be covering Camp Cretaceous on Run for Your Lives a bit later. So yes, I went ahead and watched the two, first two seasons and sent you guys voicemails. For I me. got those. Yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing it. You know, I love dinosaurs. Yes. So, All right. So episode 10. So for 10, I had Leighton and Ruth were having the conversation before everything went down and they escaped. And Ruth said, qualities that got us this far won't get us past Wilford. To best a man like that, you need to be utterly ruthless. And Leighton says, we've both done terrible things. Mm -hmm. And Ruth said, not terrible enough. I thought that was kind of foreshadowing because she kills the guy with the shovel not long mm -hmm. after. Yeah. And she's and slicing she... and dicing with swords. And mm -hmm. that, she's come a long way from being so prim and proper and her decorum being impeccable. Right. And saying like, well, hospitality has to remain neutral and uh, yeah. that kind of stuff. So. I don't think so. Not anymore. Not anymore. No more neutral hospitality. Um, my last one is a quote that he said that Leighton said to Ruth not long after that. She said, he said, I've watched Wilford, seen him take it right up to the edge of killing us all. So the question is not, are you willing to sink to his level? It's, are you willing to risk everything? Yeah. And mm. I think, honestly, that is kind of the next season. What are you willing to risk? Yeah. That's going to be interesting because uh, with Zara being on the other train and with them having uh, Audrey. Um, yeah. So my, I had two from 10, and the first one is is that I've mentioned uh, Alex's monologue at the beginning of 10. One of the lines she says is, she says, at first, I thought my mom and her people were stupid and disorganized, but now I think freedom probably has to be messy. Yes, I, I like really like too. I really like that thought because it's, it's and I, I'm not getting, I don't want to get political at all, but it's, that's America. That's America yeah. in a nutshell. Freedom is messy. Yeah. So. Uh, it, and then the it last... comes at a price. There's lots of prices, and it's not nice and neat. You can't fold it up and put it away in a drawer. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and then my last one is just from Boki, and it's after Leighton and Ruth come out of the double yoke. Uh, and he says, <laughs> okie dokie, let's go make coup. Oh, so, Boki. <laughs> and what does Leighton say? You heard the man, let's go make coup. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, Boki is great. I love their little band of misfit toy soldiers i guess you could say that they pull together their little council of people mm -hmm. that are getting things done um i really have enjoyed watching them work together this season yeah i love boki's turn when he, when he when he made his turnaround on layton uh and became loyal to layton it was it there was a, a very big change in boki and i like that and i hope he survived i hope we get to see him next season um you know he might be in a drawer who knows? I know. Who else is in a drawer? Like, we don't even know. Are Pike and Strongboy in a drawer? Yeah, that's, I was just thinking that because we didn't see them, so who mm -hmm. knows who all you is. You can't is... miss them either. They're so big and... Exactly. Prominent. <laughs> so I didn't, I don't think we got any feedback uh, this week, so, uh, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. Um, I did... I will say a couple of things about the news and about the next season. So listeners, if you don't want to get spoiled, it's not really going to spoil much, but if you don't want to hear anything at all about uh, what's coming up, uh, skip ahead about maybe 30, 45 seconds or so. Um, give you a chance. All right. <laughs> There's your warning. Um, after, after it ended, the, the second episode ended on my DVR, it did come up and it did say season three in production now. So that's exciting. 
Uh, and according to a Newsweek article, uh, they are working on on season three. They have added a new cast member, someone from the show The Good Wife. I didn't recognize the name, um, but they they also know what the character's name is going to be, but they have no clue what they're what they're about or anything like that. Um, and also that Jennifer Connelly is confirmed to appear in season three, but we have no idea what capacity it will be in. <gasps> So, Steve, what if this new cast member is the one who finds Melanie and saves her? That's what I was just thinking. Maybe, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, so. Let's piece that together. <laughs> if that so, comes to fruition. So that was a Newsweek article <laughs> dated uh, either to uh, dated the thirty first, the day after the uh, finale aired. So, or the thirtieth, whatever day it was. Okay. All right. Any podcast recommendations, Daphne? I don't have any for this week, other than. Okay. Just go ahead and listen to the coverage that um, Mark and Steve are doing on Panels to Pixels for um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yes. Great show. If you're not checking it out, you definitely should. And also, if uh, you, by the time, I'm not sure when you will get this, but uh, you'll probably get this before you find out that uh, Mark will be covering Invincible. The first three episodes and episode four with a good friend of ours named Jamie. She is going to be doing a podcast uh, over those because Jamie has actually read the Mark Kirkman comics of Invincible. So it'll be interesting to get her her take on that. So she and Mark will be doing uh, doing that uh, coming up here in the coming weeks on Panels to Pixels. Um, take care of some of our boilerplate stuff. Uh, you can hear us on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you download your podcast, whatever player of choice you use. <laughs> just check us out. Give us a review. In fact, I just gave uh, TV Podcast Industries a five-star review because I didn't realize I hadn't given them one in a while. <laughs> so, um, so check that out. Um, you can check out our website, which is panels to pixelspodcastcom We have a Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash panels to pixels And then you can email us, panels to pixels one at gmail. Dot com. We also have a YouTube channel, which is Panels to Pixels podcast. So, Daphne, thank you so much. We have come to the end of our coverage, our podcasting over Snowpiercer Season 2. But I, I, did, I would like to ask you, will you come back for Season 3? I would love to come back for Season 3. I have loved getting to break this down with you every week. It's been so much fun. There's just I have such a passion for this show. It I don't often give a new show a chance because I'm afraid it's going to get canceled. Mm -hmm. But this one, for some reason, I was intrigued. The cast and the story intrigued me. I'm always in for a post-apocalyptic TV show or movie. So, yeah, I'd love to come back. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much again. You're a superwoman. I've, you've been a marvelous co-host, and I can't wait to do it again. All uh, right. You already mentioned your podcast. Uh, you yes. guys, listeners can hear me on Panels to Pixels with Mark. Uh, again, like Daphne just mentioned, he and I will be covering the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. That, uh, the episode three, four, episode four, three, whatever episode three. just came out today. I think three. it's episode three. Ep episode three, yes. Came out, just so came fast, out today. Though. I know. I, I watched <laughs> it. I've watched it once and it, it's really, really good. So if you're not checking out the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, check those out. I need to rewatch Civil War and uh, maybe The Winter Soldier again as well. But all right. Well, thank you everyone for listening. I'm Steve. And I'm Daphne. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night. Good night.